Hi everyone, it's Chrissy again, your life skills and deployment educator, here to talk to you today about the stage three um, in the emotional cycles of deployment. I wanted to wrap up and talk just a little bit about where we are though, up until this point. So here I have a chart of the emotional cycles of deployment. If you want this in a PDF form, we can send that to you. Just shoot us an email, call us at Centralized Scheduling, someone will get that over to you. Um, stage one, anticipation of departure. And then this means a deployment is coming up. I know that I have um, a separation coming up. Um, the detachment and withdrawal stage. And then the next one we're gonna talk about today is emotional disorganization. Before I talk about emotional disorganization, I wanted to bring up something with stage two attachment and withdrawal that um, I didn't discuss in the last video. During detachment and withdrawal, there's a couple of things that um, I like to draw attention to, and that is during the final days of the deployment, this is when detachment and withdrawal typically sets in, although not always. This can also happen after the separation has already occurred. It can happen when I know that the separation is imminent. It can be weeks before, months before, or even after. Um, reality sets in at this point, so that might look like um, I'm starting to realize and take stock of all the responsibilities I have going on. Families might also uh, chart this time as saying, uh, putting in a series of lasts. This is the last time we're going to be able to take a vacation together. This is the last time we get to eat at this restaurant, the last trip to the beach, something like that. Um, this is one of the things that happen with us in our emotional state. Um, sadness and anger. Uh, will be related to the attachment and withdraw, de detachment and withdraw stage. Um, and then there is a protecting of oneself from the separation that comes ahead. So that might look like, and this doesn't happen cognitively, you don't actually think about doing this, um, but emotionally I am worried about the separation. I don't like that it's coming up. I'm feeling anxious and overwhelmed. Um, and so it's easier for me to pick a fight and be angry at you than it is for me to deal with the feelings that are actually under the surface. So realize if you are having a lot of friction with your significant other, if you have children in the house who are acting out a lot, that might actually be related to them trying to d detach and withdraw from the situation. Um, I've heard stories about children that actually won't speak to a parent before they go on deployment, which can be really upsetting, but that's actually probably what's happening with them emotionally. Um, another story that I've heard is uh, a, a friend of mine actually told me that before their upcoming deployment that she had uh, a workup and the service member had about 12 hours to go home before they actually left on deployment. And she said they had the conversation over the phone where they both decided that he just was not going to be coming home to see them, to upset the children, to have to say goodbye all over again. Um, they just decided to say, hey, we already said our goodbyes. Stay where you are. I'll see you on the other end. Um, so realize that there's no one perfect way to go through all of this. What works for you and your family um, is good. Um, but realize that you might change over time. Um, I actually noticed that in our family, I would normally do the airport goodbyes um, until I couldn't do them anymore. And then I just decided to say, hey, I'll see you when you get home. Um, it's been, it was too much for, the, for my children to continue to go and say goodbye in that area. Um, so stage three, the family might be feeling very um, emotionally disorganized and feel a sense of being unfocused. I'm taking on more responsibilities than I have before, so I feel overwhelmed. Um, during that time, I might feel a sense of loss and emptiness. Um, I also might feel very worried about what will happen during that deployment or what might happen to our family back at home. And then I can get stuck in this stage. Um, that's where you'll see a lot of spouses and family members saying things like, oh, I made it a week. And how many more weeks do I have? 52 more weeks. Most deployments aren't that long. But 
something to the effect of, I just finally am trying to survive this situation rather than what can I do with this time and make it really productive. The service member will have relief. Hey, I uh, finally get to go do that job. Um, I have, you know, taken some responsibilities off my plate. I can go and focus on what I have, but then they might later have some feelings of guilt. I've left um, a parent who's ailing. I'm not there for them when they might need me. And uh, service members will also become very mission focused at that time. They're going to try and reformat their uh, daily thoughts to not include some of the responsibilities and uh, family responsibilities that they might have or home responsibilities that will be changing so that they can perform under uh, the situation that they need to perform. Um, they will also feel sad and sometimes very lonely, worried, and they can also get stuck in this situation as well. Um, they might think, oh, I didn't realize what a deployment actually entailed. I thought that it was going to be this and it's this and I realized that this doesn't work for me anymore. Um, so just realize too that these are some of the feelings that come that they are normal. This is a normal way that pe way that people process separation. And realize that after the emotional disorganization, what we have following is recovery and stabilization. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel when you are feeling very overwhelmed emotionally. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you for the fourth stage of the emotional cycles of deployment. Bye.